Well, obviously, uh, really excited and happy for our guys. Um, we where we've come from to where we are now is is uh, amazing. Uh, they, you know, we're, our defense again was the thing that gave us a chance. You hold them to twenty three at halftime, and our goal was to hold them under fifty, and they got a couple buckets down the stretch to get the fifty. But if you look at, I don't know, Tom would probably know. You guys know. Last six or seven games, we've held everybody in the 50s except West Virginia to 65. So um, the, they made great strides. I, I, I thought we had a great start to the game. Then we allowed – the only reason they got back into it was our turnovers, which led to points on the other end. Once we settled down, obviously the, the two threes at the end of the half by Nigel, and then the start of the second half were really, really key. And then – just slowly but surely uh, wore them down and uh, kind of broke their spirit. Um, you know, it, it, I was, I haven't got to talk to you guys since the all big 12, uh, the honors went out, was really, really disappointed for, for Nigel. Uh, and I know he missed games, but there were other people that missed games and I'm not sure. I, I, I told them, we all told them use it as motivation. Uh, the thing even, I think the biggest thing is when he missed games, everyone knows what the scores were. So how valuable and how good he was for us was important. Also, Davion, he's been as consistent as anyone. And so, uh, you know, we just said, hey, this is a chance. Two of their guys made all, got honors. Here's your chance, Selton. You know, he's been, he's really gotten better on defense. And Nimar gets 11, but has to get, a, you know, I think four late. And uh, and Mike did a great job on Miles also. So I thought that it was Casey's uh, maybe his best game uh, for us. I don't know one of those early ones before he had the surgery, uh, UMKC or something. I know he had a pretty good, but on this stage uh, to get six points, eight rebounds, just did a lot of big things for us that were important. And I was really happy for Rudy also came in, gave us a little spark in the first half that uh, helped us, uh, you know, make a difference. But uh, Mike McGurl, what can you say? How, how far he's come, um, you know, as a player from freshman year, I was just proud that he got, you know, honorable mention for the all conference that says a lot in the best league in the country when, you know, you got guys, a lot of them are gonna be drafted, but he's he has uh, made huge strides. I thought last year's TCU game was, really important at, in the tournament for him uh, moving forward. And, uh, and this game, 17 points, five assists, no turnovers and, and three steals. He, he just kind of read them, got to the hoop, uh, you know, hit the pull up, got it inside, uh, just did a lot of good things. So great, great team win. Um, you know, we talked about playing hard and defending and that gives us a chance. We had 41 on our play hard. Mike had double digits on that, and Dejuan had nine. So both those guys, you know, do so so much for us that, uh, you know, it makes a difference in the game. But uh, happy, proud. Obviously, we got a tough task, quick turnaround. I uh, got them going back, get some food, get a shower, food in their stomach, and then see if we can have good preparation for Baylor tomorrow. Thank you, Coach. We'll take our first question from – Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach. Nice win. Is that the best your team's played this year? Um, it's it's probably pretty close. Uh, I I would say um, on both ends of the court and the consistency. I, if you cut out those turnovers in that uh, in the first half, uh, you know it, it. You know I thought it was it was as good a game as we played. But obviously, you beat Oklahoma at home number seven in the country coming, who is one of the hottest teams in the country. We played pretty well in that game too, a high level. Um, and so, it, but it was good. I, I thought both ends of the court consistency, you know, if we could just cut back a little bit on turnovers, um, I thought we, and maybe make our free throws a little more consistent, uh, you know, and I'm asking for everything, but it, it, we might need everything tomorrow. Defensively, you guys have gotten so much better uh, as the seasons progress, but I, I kind of feel like tonight was next level. It looked like one of your better defensive efforts, and I mean, that I can remember, to be honest. 
Yeah, it, it's um, we've, as I said, we've gotten so much better. The, the, the preparation, the scouting reports, understanding what, what we got to do, protecting the paint. Obviously, it, it helps have a defensive stopper, and Selton's kind of taking that on. He's really, really good one on one defense, getting over ball screens. Um, uh, you know that, which is important, and and then you got another one with Mike McGurl, and then our big guys have done a good job of um, of getting on the on the line of the ball screens, and then and then it's good help defense. Dan and White mentioned that just our help defense. We got uh, we had nine steals, uh, which was really important, which you know led led to some points, especially in the second half, kind of broke their spirit. Uh, and finally, you guys have obviously struggled scoring the ball at times this year. Did you feel like your team relaxed after Nigel hit those shots to end the first half and they came out with a better state of mind second half? Yeah, and just a little better execution, knowing what we're looking for, um, executing. You know, we just we, – we you know, we feel like we have an idea how to score against them. And uh, we had a couple little different looks. Uh, uh, but, you know, it, it, it helps to have Nigel go six for eight and five for six from three. Uh, that that that's and get five assists. So it spreads the defense. Same thing, Mike. Um, you know, it spreads the defense. Allows us to get inside touches and and get to the hoop. The points in the paint. Uh, we've gotten better at that too. You win that thirty six to thirty. Thank you, Coach Goodwin. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Next question to John Kurtz. Yeah, Bruce, the, the two times you played together this year, obviously you lose by 48 and 31. Do you, do you worry at all about the confidence of the team going up against Baylor after how those games went? Hey, we have nothing to lose. Um, I know they want they they just happy to, to have the opportunity. Um, and they're they're we're gonna just go. We're gonna play. We're gonna play our butts off. And and who knows? Uh, you've seen craziness happen in March. Um, I kind of joke, maybe we make some shots. Pretty good. Uh, tonight, you know, 48 percent, and uh, you know, you know, if if we just got to guard them, we got to we got to do a good job of guarding them to give us a chance. And then somebody like Nigel, Mike, somebody's got to have a big game for us to give us a chance to, uh, you know, to to compete with them. Uh, I thought they struggled, you know, for a couple, two, three games, but it looks like they they were hitting full stride this. Uh, this last couple games. Is there anything specific offensively that was working today other than the shots not going to go down? I thought it was good balance. Um, you know, just um, we made the right reads. Like I said, we took the, we talked a lot about getting straight line drives. We took those when they were there. Uh, we talked about playing off of the, the tight curls off the off our motion cuts and. I, the one time Nigel came up the curl, kicked it to Mike, just like we practiced. Mike went down the alley, got a layup. And then we talked about we got to get inside touches. And, you know, you get – and probably they need even more, but three for four for Casey and four for six. So you're, those two guys are seven for ten. So you got a good mixture of points. You know, if we make our free throws and we had those layups to start the second half, some transition, if we a little – you know, you're going to have to make those tomorrow or get to the free throw line. To, you can't can't waste those opportunities. Thanks. Thank you. Next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey Bruce, congrats on the win. Um, I'm just wondering, have you ever been part of a team that's improved more from day one to now than this group? Well, my I think my first team at SIU um, we had a dunk contest and only one guy made a dunk uh, to start the season and uh, and he got hurt when he made it. So that, those guys ended up winning, uh, I, I don't know if it was like 15 games that year. Um, I didn't I didn't think we'd win any to be honest. So that, that group was pretty special to me and always dear to my heart. But when you talk about what our guys have done, where they've come from, what they've had to deal with, um, it's 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 astronomical, and I think more than anything, to buy in, to believe, you know, we've constantly tried to be positive, give them hope, and then the hope has come out. You know, they they bought into that hope, and that and and the positivity, and and you know, responded with winning four out of five, and even some of those other games. You know, 
that we lost in that stretch. I thought we were much better. And, you know, obviously the Texas game, the Kansas game, you're playing elite teams. And I thought we were much better and competed with them at a, at a pretty high level. So it, it's uh, it's fun to watch. It's fun to see the how they've done it. And, uh, you know, it, it's 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 just been a – I told you guys a few weeks ago, I don't want the season to end because I've, I've, I love that this group comes to practice every day, uh, that they want to get better, they listen. And, uh, you know, I, it's too bad we didn't hit this, this – uh, kind of stride at, at earlier in the season, but it's better better now than not at all. Uh, I also wanted to ask, could you hear the K-State fans in here tonight? I knew there weren't a lot of them, but could you hear them? Yeah, we could. Uh, you know, there was it was very limited crowd. Um, we probably had, I would say, 80% of the fans uh, that were there. So, uh, you know, we they they got they got excited when we had some some good bat when we played good basketball there's no doubt uh not not it's nowhere near what uh what we've had even in in Bramlage or some of the other places but um just happy to be just happy to be playing that's that's the, a year ago you guys were all part of it um you know we won played a really good game against TCU and we went back to the hotel and we went home and and then there's so so many unknowns to now, you know, as long as we don't test positive tomorrow, we'll be playing a game at 1.30 and uh, have a great opportunity to play one of the best teams in the country. Uh, one last one for you. Is there anything you'll stress with the guys defensively against Baylor? Is there one key to slowing their offense down? Um, we got to take care of the ball so we don't let them get in transition. Um, I think that's going to be key. Um, you know, hopefully we're, we've made the improvement um, – that uh, you know that where now we can guard people one on one a little better, we, better in the ball screens, better in the help. I think the key to the game will probably be if we're going to have a chance that we don't let them get second chance points, transition points, and second chance points are going to be really key for us. All right, thanks, Bruce. Congrats again. Thank you. Our next question to Michael Goins. Well, Bruce, how would you categorize this stretch of basketball that you guys have been playing for the last three, four weeks? Well, just obviously it's good basketball. We're, we're competitive now. And, 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 you know, we probably weren't competitive at that time. And, um, you know, I, you guys, you know, a lot of people questioned. And, you know, we, it, we were so new, so young. We didn't have practice. We didn't have them together. We didn't have units. They didn't understand. But uh, as I said, They've, they've, they've gone with what, you know, we stayed positive. They believed in each other. They believed in us. And uh, they played good basketball. Now we'll see tomorrow. You know, and I just, again, I just hope we can come and compete at a high level. Um, we've been able to do it against Texas, against Kansas, against Oklahoma. So now let's see if we can do it with a quick turnaround against Baylor. How key is Davion as an interior force to, to be a floor spreader and keep uh, keep things in motion? Yeah, you know, he, you know, just I've said all along, he's, he's been as consistent as he's been our biggest surprise. And then he's been as consistent as anybody. He's had a couple bad, you know, not bad games, but games he just didn't get as much done. But um, he, 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 he made some big plays today. He's got great hands. And, uh, you know, when he didn't make, you know, him and uh, Nigel didn't get any recognition. I text both of them. And uh, the thing that Davion said, Coach, only we know how much improvement we've made. Only we know what we, how hard we've worked. And, all, and only we know how hard we're going to continue to work and what we're going to do at K-State. And uh, it's, it says a lot about a young man that has not had the easiest life in, in growing up. Uh, people have helped him, taken care of him, and he's got a huge heart, and he he, he believes and trusts, and uh, so really, really proud of him. Well, what's given your staff that patience to to continue to preach the hope and that uh, you're going to stick with them? I don't think there was any other choice uh, that we had. You know, it's just it's been such a difficult year for everybody, and um, you know that's you know again I always tell you I have a strong faith in. I, I believe there's always a, a reason and a, 
why things happen and and slowly you know just all I could do I told you I was there for the players that was the number one thing I had to be there for the players and uh, you know it, we had to go through a lot but um, you know we we uh, and our coaches really not just me but the constant communication every night texting them talking to them getting them in in the during the day to watch film I, I would tell you we've watched We've had more players watch more film than maybe we we ever have had. Um, so it's uh, uh, you know it was it's it's been fun to watch it and um, you know I just I hope we can come and you know we should be relaxed but just come and play and compete tomorrow and see what we can if we can push them a little bit. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate your yeah. time. Thank you. Uh, next question to Colin Rivello. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. You're good, sir. Riviello. Congrats on the win, coach. Earlier you mentioned that your athletes or you have nothing to lose by playing Baylor tomorrow. Arguably, some of your athletes, this is their final game, possibly, in their collegiate career. What message are you trying to send them and what values do you hope they'll take away? Well, I, I hope we have everyone back. If you know anything about our team, we got all young guys and, and our one senior he can come back also. So, you know, our, our, you know, we hope that we have this group back, but um, all along we've, we've said that, um, you know, one of the things I talked about this week, if you're brave enough to start to go through all we did. Now you should have the, the courage to finish. And, and that's, that's, that's what we've talked about. And all the things we've been through this year, it's, it's not only that you've seen their improvement basketball, it's going to help them in life to deal with tough times and situations that you have no control. And, uh, you know, I think those are the big things. And and just to enjoy the opportunity. We've talked all along. Hey, we, we're, I think there's only not many teams in the country that have played all their games. And we've played all our games. And you got to give our guys some credit. Our medical staff, our players, the staff, they're being diligent and, and fighting through this thing. I still, I look at people are 11 and four and stuff like that. It's like, you know, they've played 15 games, 18 games. We played every game. And and we played with six guys. We played with seven guys. We played with eight guys. We played under man. And, and they've, they've, you know, they never lost faith and they kept coming back. So you got to give them a lot of credit. 